The XFL Week 5 cable ratings are in from ESPN and FX, and let's just say they took a little big hit, I guess. So the XFL slate of four cable telecasts on FX, ESPN, and ESPN2 stared directly into the eye of the March Madness storm. So 18 of the XFL's 20 games have aired on cable, each airing as well on ESPN+. Plus. The league's only two airings on network television, ABC, averaged over 1.6 million viewers with a peak at 2.3 million in week one. The XFL finally returns to all-over-the-air network television this coming week on ABC, but the league has a lot of competition for eyeballs, as evidenced by their viewership numbers in week number five. So, let's take a look. So, for week five in the XFL, kicked off late Thursday night, game at 10.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN between the Seattle Sea Dragons and previously unbeaten Houston Roughnecks. The telecast took a beating in viewership, averaging only 256,000 viewers. The game rated 48th out of 150 cable TV shows in that all-important 18-49 to 49 demo. Friday's coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament were 21 out of the top 22 rated cable TV shows across TNT, TBS, and True TV. That is just tough to battle. The first part of Saturday night doubleheader on FX, which saw the D.C. Defenders top the St. Louis Battlehawks in front of over 35,000 fans at the Dome, averaged 320,000 viewers. Telecast ranked 50 out of 150. Saturday's 10 p.m. Eastern telecast on FX, which featured two winless teams in Vegas and the Guardians, averaged 234,000 viewers, the lowest viewership total for an XFL game this season. The game ranks 73rd out of 150 cable shows in that top demo. The final game of Week 5 featured the Arlington Renegades and San Antonio Brahmas on ESPN2. thought this would do a little bit better because it's on ESPN2. But the 9 p.m. telecast averaged 246,000 viewers. The game ranks 71st out of 150 cable TV shows. So the quick XFL TV analysis on the ratings. Not a pretty week for the XFL in terms of viewership. Losing casual sports viewers to NCAA and March Madness is an expected outcome, but didn't help matters that the odd scheduling by Disney for XFL games. Not only has it hurt attendance in specific markets and prohibited families from coming to late night weekday or Sunday games, it has an, a direct effect on luring viewers. By scheduling games that passed 1 a.m. in half the country, you eliminate viewers. I was tired of staying up all night and doing stuff after the game. There was nights I was up either till 1 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast or even up till 3 o'clock in the morning doing fantasy and recaps of games. So you can't, why, it doesn't help you at all. It doesn't help you at all by putting late games on. So there's no getting around the fact that the league's viewership and overall interest in March will take a hit. We all knew that. That's the unexpected result, but the optics create the feel of a league struggling to stay relevant, which is unfortunate. The XFL is returning to ABC this weekend, which could help with some added visibility, but the league needs to weather the storm and hope that viewership returns later this season. Although it's in a different part of the calendar, the USFL, remember, had struggled to get a foothold in viewership on cable TV last season. By mid-season, seeing some games hit under 300,000, the USFL did, and having uh, over-the-air network telecast had dipped into 300,000 territory. The USFL was able to get to the finish line in decent shape when the smoke cleared. Now, can the XFL in 2023 can they do the same that remains to be seen so the week six tv schedule the xfl returns to a more traditional schedule this coming week with two abc games in the afternoon saturday and sunday that's good at 1 and 3 p.m eastern respectively people can go to those games and bring their family and friends the lone X <coughs> fx telecast takes place saturday night at 7 p.m okay we're still games over at 10 that's fine. The week six finale sees the 4-1 and Houston Roughnecks square off against the 5-0 and D.C. Defenders. That's a Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Would love to see that game flex to ABC, but that won't happen. So you got the Seattle Sea Dragons at New York, or New York, Gar or New York Guardians. Orlando Guardians, that's at 1 p.m. on Saturday, March 25th. That is on ESABC. 
Then you have the Battle Hawks, St. Louis Battle Hawks at Vegas Vipers. The Battle Hawks are on the road. That's at 7 p.m. on FX. Then Brahma's at Renegades. Not the greatest game to put on ABC. Both teams are struggling. We saw what they did last this past week. That's at 3 p.m. And then the game of the week, Houston Roughnecks at DC Defenders. That is uh, set a Monday night game, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. As for attendance numbers uh, for the March 16th game at the Roughnecks Seattle Sea Dragons, that had 9,231 people, and that was on ESPN, a late night game. That affected viewership and attendance. Then you had the March 18th game with the Battle Hawks DC Defenders. That was 35,868. That was on FX. And then you had the Orlando Guardians Vegas Vipers game. That was the attendance for that one on March 18th was 6,008. Seems like Vegas Vipers will be that kind of 6,000 range. And then finally, the Arlington Renegades at Brahma's. We were hoping maybe getting 20,000-ish for that. That was, again, 13,274. So we knew this would be the lull of the season. It really matters is how we finish. We'll just have to keep an eye on things, but it's going to start to get tough. Major League Baseball will come back, and then the USFL will come back. And this is something that the XFL 2.0 era never faced. They never went into games uh, into March Madness. The season had stopped. March Madness was canceled because of you-know-what. So this is all new territory, and I am sure next year when it comes to scheduling games, the XFL will probably do a lot better job, but we'll see. They could still flex as we keep moving through the season. Let us know what you think in the comments.